Right here you got two uh, pretty interesting things going on. Two uh, orchids, one rare, one common. This is Epipactus gigantea, and this is a pretty common orchid. It occurs in riparian areas, uh, you know, in Death Valley, all the way down into Baja, California, Sur Mexico. It's uh, it just, you know, it just needs some pretty much ever-present moisture. And uh, you can see uh, it's doing pretty well. It, though it is common, it's still a, a beautiful ace flower, and it's a perennial you can see it comes up, uh, just comes up from the ground right there, and this is a little little ditch area, you know. It's uh, it, though it'll dry out maybe in August, you know. It's uh, it's pretty much wet throughout the year, and it just there's at least moisture, you know, a couple inches down there when it does finally dry out. Again, this is Epipactus gigante. Look at that labellum, that bottom uh, teeple right there. That's where all the magic is. That's what lures the pollinators in. And then, of course, uh, this, like milkweeds, these orchids have pollinia. Their pollen is does not occur uh, on stamens uh, the way you normally think of pollen. You know, lots of little little dusty particles. It's packed into two uh, granules per flower, uh, you know, and that those are called pollinia. And, uh, and the orchids, they're generally right up under that uh, that little green hook thing coming down in the center of the flower. So the pollinator is attracted to that labellum. He goes in there. Fucks around a little bit, and then and coming out, gets one of the polinias stuck to his head. Now, this juicy bastard up here is another orchid, but this one's actually pretty rare. This is Cypripedium californicum, a.k.a. the lady slipper. And you can obviously see why they call it that. In, a, in the Cypripediums, the labellum uh, is this big ace. It looks like a bag, you know? So the pollinator's got to go in there. He's attracted to the bag, and... Uh, or she, it, whatever the hell, I don't know what their pronoun is. They go down in there, and then coming out, they get the same thing. You get the pollinia stuck to the top of your head. This is, uh, again, Cypripedium californicum. Tends to like uh, not full exposure, not hot sunny sites. I believe it's a California endemic, uh, northern California endemic. Might be uh, in southern Oregon, southern Oregon a little bit, but it generally likes uh, the wet areas too, and this is a whole riparian hillside you can see you got a couple more down there real nice well just a beautiful goddamn flower you know and these little colonies last for years you know as long as the people don't fuck them up too bad but uh people have a habit of fucking things up so you know who knows maybe they'll put a uh a uh arby's or a fucking walmart or some uh stupid shoe store or a ugly housing track there you never know oh yeah that's pretty nice doesn't it make you feel a little bit less homicidal Looking at this beautiful flower, it certainly does me. And, uh, you know, I've seen this plant before. I've seen uh, these, this Cypripedium californicum before, but, uh, you know, probably three or four years ago. Uh, not at this, uh, not this population. But I never realized how fuzzy, uh, you know, those uh, teeples were. They got that slight layer of pubescence on the back. I mean, even the goddamn leaves. Look at the leaf margins. They got those little hairs, those little trichomes. That slight, that tomentose uh, pubescence. You know, and that's something you want to pay attention to when you're trying to figure out uh, what species of any plant you're looking at. You know, that the stems got hairs, the petioles, the, the petioles got hairs, the flower, uh, the tepals, sepals, petals, all that shit, they got hairs on them? Or are they glabrous? Are they smooth? It's a pretty nice plant. I'm not going to lie. You know, I feel pretty good now. Anyway. That's all I got for you. Enjoy yourself. Have a nice rest of your evening over.